last week I began to share my story uh, of what the Lord God did for me and what he did not only for me but for my family and I believe for believers around the world. Um, we are in a very difficult time as the body of Christ. Uh, we have an enemy, Satan, the devil, Lucifer, and he has a mission of, and his mission is to blind the body of Christ that they may not know the truth. He does not want believers to be free. And so he hides truth from believers and uh, he leads believers to false prophets churches, fake churches, satanic churches. In Africa, in America, in Europe, in other parts of the world. I, for one, I was a victim of this mission. And I believed the wrong things. I believed false prophets. I believed false pastors. And whatever they told me to do, that is what I did. Although I had a Bible, but I never read the Bible. However, my God-given instincts used to tell me there's something wrong with these churches. Now, uh, I'm going to tell people why uh, I'm sharing this and how it happened. Um, my story is very long. But of course, I was born in darkness. I was, I, raised, I was raised up in darkness. And me as a young girl, I had disobeyed God. And I lived a life of sin. Not only a life of sin, but a life whereby, a life where I was ignorant of the truth. So, um, I ended up in captivity. I ended up being enslaved by false prophets, by witchcraft by the false Christ himself, by Lucifer himself. Lucifer and his darkness and his Jezebel. Uh, and I'm sharing this because I promised the Lord, I said that, Lord, if you deliver me, I am not going to allow other people to suffer the way I have suffered. As you can see, I'm not even smiling because sometimes I don't know where to start from. But I'm here to tell people that we should be very careful of what's going on in the world right now, especially what's going on in the body of Christ. But before I start, I would like to pray because I would like people to understand me and people to understand that God has given people different missions. And me, my mission is to help believers, although even the entire world, but because I was in the center of this false prophets secret society or mega pastor secret society in africa uh rich famous mega pastors in africa and uh it was a very bad experience uh it was an experience that i do not want anyone to experience this this morning i woke up and i called my son who lost almost his tooth after falling when I wasn't with him. Uh, I've not been, been with my children for 10 years. And it's not because of me. It's because of the darkness, the captivity uh, that is in Africa, but also because God himself wanted to help me, to save me, to separate me so he can teach me truth so that I can be able to help other people around the world. So today I was talking to my son and I was very sad because I don't know what he's thinking. He's looking at his mother on camera talking, but he's like, where is my mom? But maybe when he grows up, he'll understand that God had a mission. I was trapped for a mission. I'm so blessed that uh, we are still alive. I never, I didn't die in this situation. And every day I wake up, I'm like, sometimes I don't sleep. 
because I'm like Jesus when am I gonna see my children I'm tired of sleeping in people's houses I've babysat, I've babysat my friend's children in America you know and I love children but I'm like how about my children sometimes I don't know what they eat sometimes I don't I mean they've gone through a lot but to God be the glory for saving me and for what I'm gonna do today um I'm gonna start like this briefly I come from a, a, a background I come from Uganda East Africa and um, my I grew up with a single mom and uh, uh, she was a nurse but later on she went and started to do business and one day she was robbed and we became really poor that we never had food to eat so uh there were so many wrong activities that went on in the house me i decided to get married at a young age and when i got married to this guy he, he was a 19 me i was 18 i think and um i got married why because i i never wanted me i grew up respecting married people and I wanted to be a respected young girl. And I wanted to be a real righteous girl. Like a girl who is in Christ. And so I had to get married so that I don't have, uh, like, live a sexual, like a, a, a scene of immorality. So I got married at uh, the age of, officially married at the age of 20. Uh, after I had had my, my child. So the guy I got married to uh we went uh, before okay we got married but i want to say this in my previous testimony the story there's something i mentioned about about this poverty and the reason we went to false prophets but let me say it again so because we were very poor we had no food to eat i did not only go to get married at a tender age but me and my sisters and my mother, we went to a false prophet. We didn't know he was a false prophet. I had heard rumors that this guy was a false prophet. But I was like, okay, they told me, no, he's not a false prophet. Me and my family members, we went to a man who has a very big synagogue. So many people you can, sometimes you cannot even enter inside that synagogue. It's so big. I don't know how many people there are. But this guy used to cook meat, used to give us candy. He used to force us to drink water. But when I went to that church, I began to get nightmares. And I don't know what happened. Definitely, we, I connected myself, my family to witchcraft. Somebody, our relative, told us to go there. So it was a counterfeit. But me, I got so scared and I told my mom and my sisters, we cannot go back. So we left. I left that church and I began to go to another church. Uh, it's called Rubaga Miracle Center. Most pastors know. So, and when I started to go to Rubaga Miracle Center, it's like my life began to correct a little bit. I, I decided to get married. I got married. But the husband I got married to, he used to beat me. He tied me with ropes. He used to be very abusive. I remember there's a time he kicked me when I was pregnant for my son. Now people say, oh, what did you do to beat you? No one is supposed to beat nobody. It was the enemy. You know, it was Satan. Satan was my enemy. That's why I forgive that guy. I'm not mad at him. I just forgave him because I knew that the enemy didn't want me to succeed in life. He didn't want me to prosper in Christ. He didn't want me to love Jesus. So he would cause people to do things like that to me. Anyway, I forgive the guy. But um, so years passed and this marriage became really sour and bitter. So I myself, I gave up. But before I gave up, I joined myself with Radio 1 FM 90 and I used to work as a marketing executive and a voiceover advertiser. So uh, my kind of job was go to clients, speak to clients, sign, sign an order, come back to office and write a script and then do a voiceover. I loved my job and I was blessed in that job. However, as a young girl, Remember the marriage is so bad. Every time I cry, my friends at church would see me. I would go to church crying. I mean, sometimes eyes are red and they would say, oh, Rachel, what's going on? We know you're not happy. What is going on? 
So anyway, to cut the story short, I ran out of that marriage while I was working for Radio 1. But I repented to Jesus. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. Anyway, I was misled and I linked myself to a man who was married. And I realized that I was sinning against God. Because when I'm ministering, I don't want to hide anything. And so this guy, he used to have a gun. He used to be very rich. He had a woman and I told him, I'm a born, actually initially I told him I'm a born again Christian, I'm a wife and I have ch a child. But there was witchcraft definitely. My mother, my people at home, they know that uh, this guy was a super witch, not only a witch, but was a devil's agent. And he worked for the government. And so this guy, uh, he, wa he tried to force me to deny Jesus at one point. After like six years, I gave up. I said no. He said, oh, I'm going to marry you. I'm leaving my wife. I said no. It's not the right thing to do. I'm done with this relationship. So I rededicated my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I decided to get born again. It was really difficult. I'm not going to lie. Because there was a lot of involvement with demons and darkness and witchcraft. And me as a person, I could not break these things. I needed Jesus. But anyway... Um, so I had to come to the Lord to say, you know, I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, I'm going to marry you. He even went to pastors. Now this is the thing he went, I, I, myself, I went to one Bishop in Uganda and I told him I have a prayer request. Pray that you see that man, I want this man to live my life. He's married and I feel he's dangerous. And this guy told me, does he have money? So it was a money thing. I had to find ways to run out of this guy's life. But before I ran out, I was given poison. Uh, there's a guy who met me at Radio 1. He was giving me a business deal. And he was giving me a business deal. And uh, I said no. Uh, some details I can't talk over the phone. That's why I'm talking like this. Because there are things I cannot talk over video that involve government uh, my children are in Uganda. I don't want them to be endangered. Uh, but I was given poison. And I, 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 it, it began to affect me in a very bad way. Uh, while I was in Uganda. It, I, now in Uganda when I took this poison. It did not react instantly. It reacted when I came to America. So I was given poison uh, 2000 and around 2010 that's when i was given poison and then um i came to america in 2012 i don't want to meander but this is the thing um i myself i sinned against god right and so i had to repent but there were side effects you know what they call consequences of sin sometimes people say your sins have been forgiven you're not guilty but some of us my soul ended up in Hades. My soul ended up with Satan. My soul ended up, I ended up in a lot of pain. Not only my soul, but my body. I suffered a lot. A lot. Because of the poison I had taken. Because of even the voodoo, the, the witchcraft they had done to me. So I had to run to Jesus. He was my only help and he was my only guide. So anyway... Poverty led me to going to false prophets and poverty led me to getting married to this guy who used to be very abusive and evil and bad. Remember last time I told you that the rich man told me there is no God, there is no Jesus, he's a mere man. I say no. I grew up knowing Jesus and I'll pray until he delivers me. I am a miracle. The woman you see here, I'm a miracle. And I'm here by the grace of God. Amen. Now, my journey is so long, like I always say. But this is the thing. Um, in Uganda, there's something I have to mention. I worked for Radio Wonder and then I had to change jobs. Uh, uh, because I don't even have a reason. <laughs> I really hated poverty. Now, I had told you that we were poor before. So all the time I would be worried for poverty. And so I ventured into a real estate uh, business. I started a real estate company, Lakeshore Projects, and also a microfinance company. 
so microfinance i would lend to people that don't have much money so they can support their families and their businesses i'm a woman of people i love people i love people anything i do i love to help people unfortunately i wasn't sustained there because the poison began to affect my brain and coming to america here i'm not gonna tell you so much because i used to travel vacation so i had an american visa so i ran away from uh uh, Uganda my mother told me you have to run away and go to America because your life is in danger I tell people before I came to America I used to uh, move in a car that was tinted it's called a super custom at one point I was arrested by army men that had batons and they began to hit me my whole body I was taken to a safe house that is in Chireka on Ginger Road where I was tortured. I was told, take off your shoes, take off your belt. I was put in a, in a small cell that had so many women stinking of urine, their, their insects. It was so, so bad. But when I was in that, that place, I prayed. I said, Lord, take me out. Let me tell you, we have a miracle working God. I'm telling a miracle happened and I was released. But before I was released, these guys who tortured me, they conjured things on me. Anyway, thank God my mother said, you have to run. I left my children and I came here. I'm going to tell people that some of the reasons as to why I fell into such problems was because I was in the world. Number two, there is injustice in my country. Number three, I was being forced to do a, a deal that I could not take. Number four, the most important, it was because of Jesus. I was forced and tortured to deny Jesus. Why? Because the guy I used to hang out with, the guy who had promised to marry me, yes, even my mother knows that guy and my mother supported him. But it's because I said no to Satan. I was being harassed tormented because of my faith i'm starting to tell people the truth that jesus is real he's alive but people that will invest their time in the word of god people that will stop chasing after miracles those people will be helped because truth is what sets us free if you don't read truth and do truth you can be free also, it is important for people to understand you cannot be a Christian and you involve yourself with sin, with darkness, going to clubs, happening, drinking alcohol. You cannot uh, have sex with men that are not yours. It's very important. You cannot be of the world and yet in Christ. You cannot support drug addiction. You cannot support evil. Because we are the light of the world and our mission is to have our light out to the world. Amen. How did I learn all that? When I came to America in 2012, after my, my brain was damaged, my blood was damaged, my skin was damaged, my eyesight, people, I can see without glasses. Jesus healed me. He healed me, but he made sure I go to the hospital to get medical attention but also he delivered me my eyes are okay now my skin is okay now my hair is back okay is back now why there is power in jesus's name there is power in prayer there is power in reading the word of god and most importantly knowing that you are a child of god and you cannot involve yourself with satan when I came to America and I went to Celebration International Church in 2016, I was so disoriented. I was so lost. I was at the verge of death. I think I mentioned to you last week that I wanted to take my own life, but God didn't allow it. And that day, a lady prayed for me, a bishop, uh, her name is Bishop, uh, sorry, Reverend Jacqueline. She said, Reverend, Reverend Jennifer, she said, listen to a still small voice. I didn't know what she meant. I left. I went to work. 
but one day I was in, I mean, when I, 2020, 2016, when I got an encounter with the Holy Spirit and he told me, read Galatians chapter five. And the Lord told me, you have to repent and turn away from sin so you can be saved. And the Lord began to visit me like real visiting me by showing me scripture. He knows that in Africa, I never read scripture. So um, one, I'm going to give you an example that one, that the, the night uh, of April 20, 2016, when I was sleeping uh, on the mat, praying, seeking God, I didn't know where Galatians 5 was. But the still small voice told me, read Galatians 5. Who was that? That was Jesus who gave me a way out of darkness. And the person you see here is a product of the grace of God. I am a product of the mercies of God. I was not, uh, I'm no longer enslaved by false prophets. I'm no longer enslaved by any secret society. I'm no longer enslaved by the rich man who wanted to kill me for Christ. I am no longer enslaved with sin. And Colossians 1.13 is so true, says that the Lord has delivered us from the powers of darkness. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. I bless God today. The road wasn't easy. So many tears, so many sorrow. But I'm here to tell Christians, wherever you are, never compromise with sin. Never be on two sides. If you are in Christ, be in Christ. Don't support the world. We are supposed to pull the world out. But we are not supposed to support sin. You cannot say, I'm a believer. And yet I support drug addiction. I support abortion. I support devils. No, I left a man who was so rich. He had a big farm. If I talk of, have you ever seen a thousand cattle? Have you ever seen a man who has 60 homes? A man who signs million dollar checks? I, Rachel Gayla, I said no. But it was worth the pain. I knew Jesus. He was my strength. And it was my protection. I stand to tell every young woman, wherever you are, do not give in because you need money. You need school fees. You need to show off. No. Now look at me right now. I was given poison, but Jesus took me out. He has protected me and my children. And I stand to say that hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. He is alive. He is mighty. He is powerful. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And finally, we are in the end times. I kindly ask people to invest their times in reading the word of God and sharing the gospel. Satan wants to destroy believers by blinding them and not knowing truth. I kindly ask us to see John chapter 8. John chapter 8. You know, I was persecuted for the gospel. But let us see John chapter 8. My testimony, I kind of, you know. But John chapter 8, the Lord says. John chapter 8, 31, he says. Those that hold on to my teachings are truly mine disciples. They shall know the truth and the truth who set them free. So if you don't invest your time in reading his word, how are you going to know the truth? I was deceived back in Uganda by false prophets. I myself lived in darkness, but now I'm no longer in darkness because I saw the light. And I bless God. I usually tell people, I thank God for the guy who gave me a visa to America. But I thank God who has preserved me. I thank God for people who have prayed for me. I thank God for people who have supported me. And now, very important for us to listen to this. God blessed me and he saved me. But I started a mission in Uganda, Kampala. And we are called Saviors Love Uganda. We uh, gather the youth, the widows, the mothers, redundant people, children without school fees and without that. And also other people. But we have seen God use us in those families. And guys, if you want to support us, my number is 978-991-7034. And help us. We take them back to school. Last time when I was in Newton Wellesley Hospital, uh, recently, it's been four months, ago, four months ago. Now we are in December. I think today is the 6th of December, 2023. But... um. I was taken to the hospital because my HB was very low. 
I was below 3.5 because of the poison it affected my blood system so I was taken to Newton Wesley Hospital and I was given a lot of blood three pints of blood and medication but the doctor said no you cannot toil that hard I was working as a CNA and I was taking care of these ladies these mothers and fathers but that cannot i mean uh from the day i became sick i'm not doing that anymore that is why i'm telling people help me we have a big mission uh we are planning to i bought some pieces of land but we are planning to build uh, uh a school uh we are planning to build a school a health center and we are planning my main reason here is really people need truth i want to have people um my i'm training evangelists to go around uganda distributing bibles uh distributing uh notes because i've written books i've written so far seven books we have so many pamphlets we have to distribute them around the village so that people can get knowledge and we have to transfer we have to translate the bible from english to luganda in the language they understand so that they can know the god we serve right now and so if you want to help us and support us awesome now we not only have one uh center kagoma we have buloba and we have busega and in buloba basically it has been women mothers we gather we pray and we share the word of god and there my sister is helping me out and busega we have um amos Kilis is helping me out in kampala we have seeds of light it's going to be shafik and and my son and so we ask you people to support us and stand with us in this. So you see, the Lord saved my life for the sake of other people around the world, especially in Africa where I come from, and even in Boston, Massachusetts. I've been in Mass Massachusetts for 10 years. Now, I kindly ask you to stand with me in prayer. If you did not understand what I just spoke, please, you can revisit other YouTube videos and please share this testimony we are in the end times let us be aware of the devil's tactics matthew 7 and i kindly ask you to pray for me and pray for my children that very soon we'll be together i love you and god bless you so i've written books uh, for your own good uh, you can go to our website www.rachelgaylaministries.org and you can uh, support us with cash up or venmo I love you and I bless you and God bless you. I love you. I send greetings from my children and my family and Savior's love. God bless you. I love you.